my dears and welcome back to my corner of the internet. I'm Shannon and today I have another book talk video to share with you guys and today we are talking about Faux by Ian Reid. A couple years ago on my channel I filmed a review for another one of his books. That one was called I'm Thinking of Ending Things and it was very interesting and as soon as I saw this book sitting on the shelf and realized that it was the same author I grabbed it immediately. There's something about both of the books of his that I have read that are just so compelling, so fascinating, and just really cover you in a unsettling feeling of dread throughout the entire time that you're reading the story. It just settles right into the pit of your stomach and doesn't leave until you finish the book. Sometimes it doesn't leave until a while after you finish the book. So. I would say the genre of this book is a bit of mystery, a bit of thriller, and some sci-fi. Sci-fi is not generally a genre that I gravitate towards when it comes to books. No real reason why. There's just so many books and that's just low on the list of books to read for me. Uh, but I didn't care when it came to this book. I just knew I had to read his book. So the book is about a married couple. Their names are Junior and Hen. Hen is short for Henrietta, and together they live on a farm. Uh, they're isolated, but for the most part they have a really happy life, at least from Junior's perspective, which is the perspective we start off with. Um, he works in a factory, Hen has a job, I don't know if it's ever mentioned where she works or what she does, but she works, he works, they have chickens on their farm. He likes the simple, quiet life. And if you were to ask him, does Hen like that life as well, he would tell you yes. <laughs> um, even though whether that's true or not remains to be seen. Now in filming a book talk on this book, it might be a little different because in terms of plot, not a whole lot happens. 98.9% .9 of the book is spent inside of this farm home with only Hen and Junior and then eventually another character, Terrence. It's important to note as well that this book takes place in the future. It's never given a specific year, we're never told exactly when in the future it takes place, but it's obvious it's in the future. At one point one of the characters talks about a time when humans used to drive their own cars and he talks about it as though this is absolutely insane that a human who was capable of error was for so long in charge of their own vehicles you know these huge metal death machines whereas now in their time period all cars are 100% self-driving. So at the beginning of the book, Junior is sitting around in his living room. He's drinking a beer after a long day. It's late and he sees headlights out in his driveway. And it's a bit late for visitors, especially when you're not expecting them. You know, it's he's right away kind of put on guard about who it could be that is at the house. So eventually a man gets out of the car. This is Terrence, the third character. Terrence, the third character we're talking about. And um, he knocks on the door and he comes in and he's acting very friendly towards them. He's like, Junior, Hen, it's so good to see you guys. And they're kind of like, or Junior at least, is kind of like, okay. And he comes in and he explains to them why he's there. He tells them that Junior has um, become a finalist in sort of a contest, in sort of a lottery, and he has been chosen as one of however many people who are going to be part of a space expedition. They're going to go for a period of time and um, the company is called Outermore and Terrence is really kind of trying to hype them up like look how lucky you are isn't this exciting and Junior's like I didn't enter any kind of lottery like this and Terrence is like no no I know um but we know that you're interested in space and things like that and Junior's kind of like 
How do you know that? And Terrence is like, well, you know how like your phones and tablets are kind of recording and listening to everything you say. Well, you spent a bit of time here and there talking about your interest in space, you know, the moon and the sun, things like that. And so those are people we just automatically picked, put into this lottery. And Junior's kind of like, oh, not really interested. And Terrence is like, well, it's not, you can't really opt out of it. But, um, you know, it's fine. You're not going right away. You're going to have a bit of time before you have to leave. And uh, Junior's like, okay. And Terrence is like, yeah, and you might not even get chosen. You're just a finalist. There's another round of deciding that has to go on. I just want to come talk to you, you know, sort of interview you a bit. And then later, you know, it could be years from now, you'll be notified if you are one of the people who have been chosen. So at this point, Junior and Hen are kind of like, okay, you know, they don't feel like they have any options. So they let him in and they explain more of the program to him. And they tell him that when he goes, if he's chosen, that he doesn't have to worry about his wife. Because in his absence, a sort of hmm, AI would take his place. It is a machine that would look just like him to the point that, you know, even his mother would have a difficult time telling the two apart. He would have Junior's memories. He would have Junior's personality. He would look just like him. Everything like that. And they're like, okay. And Junior's really put off by this. He's like, listen, I don't care how good of an AI you have. There's no way it can replace me. But again, they're told not to worry about it yet. There's plenty of time before the final people are chosen. So eventually Terrence leaves. Hen and Junior get back to their regular everyday lives. They go to work. They do what they have to do. Two years passes and then one day Terrence comes back. He comes back and he tells Junior that he has been selected and he's going. And um, so he's kind of got bags with him, Terrence says, and he's like, I'm going to move in for a little while just to help get you ready. We're going to do some really intensive interviews. And I just want to um, observe the way you two live. Just go on about your business as you would, and I will just observe. So at first, Junior and Hen are kind of like, I, okay, I guess. But then as time goes on, the more and more time that Terrence is spending in the house, the more and more Junior is really getting bad vibes from him. Hen's acting weird. She's not wanting to spend time with Junior. Like she's been weird since the first visit, honestly. She's just ever since Terrence came that first time, nothing's been the same between the two of them. She sometimes doesn't even want to eat dinner with him. She sometimes doesn't want to sleep in the same bed as him. And he just kind of brushes it off to her being stressed out about what's going to happen or what could potentially happen. Then after time goes by a little bit, Junior starts to get a little more and more and more suspicious about this Terrence guy. And he's he wants to call the cops. He wants to do whatever. But Hen kind of talks him out of it, saying, you know, there's really nothing we can do. We just have to do what he says and hope you're not gone for long. So the interviews continue, continue. Terrence is really grilling him about um, various memories that he has. And after a bit of time, Junior's starting to realize that he doesn't really have many memories before he met and married Hen. And that's kind of weirding him out a bit. And sometimes when he's left alone in the house, People will come back to the house and they'll say like, Junior, are you okay? And he'll be, and he'll be in a daze, just kind of staring at the wall or in the sink or at the floor. And he'll be like, yeah, what do you mean? And they'll be like, you were staring off into space for a very long time. So he's starting to exhibit some strange behaviors as well. And along with the feeling that whatever's going on isn't right, Junior thinks that he's starting to put the pieces of the puzzle together 
and he's thinking that Terrence is here and trying to learn so much about him because Terrence is the one that's going to try to take his place when he goes off into space. And eventually everything builds to such like a fever pitch that that one day Junior blurts out his suspicions to Terrence. Terrence tries his best to reassure him that no, that is not it. And um, in fact, a lot of the things that Junior believes to be it aren't it. So if you want to read this book for yourself and you do not want spoilers, now is the time to click away because I'm going to tell you the end and how it all unfolds. You guys, it is it's good. So um, if this sounded at all interesting to you, I suggest clicking away. But if you want to stay and hear the ending, here's how it went. So Terrence breaks the news to Junior that he's the replacement. When Terrence came the first time two years ago, that was him dropping off the AI and that the junior we've been with throughout the book is the AI and Junior's like no 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 that is not at all possible and he looks at Hen and Hen is sitting in the chair and you can see she's getting very emotional and she even mouths the words I'm sorry to him and he's like no there's no way that's right and Terrence is like, yes, it is. And the real Junior's coming home today. And as they're sitting there, a bunch of men arrive and they escort the old Junior back into the home. And Terrence says to him, it's very important for the replica to see the original come home. And the replica Terrence is really freaking out and he is like, no, I am not the replacement. I'm the real one. And you know, Terrence says to him, then why? Why don't you think you can't remember anything before Hen? That's because that's the memories you told me about. That's what we programmed you with, is your life with Hen. That's why you can't remember before her. And he's just, he's really unsettled by that. And then when the original Junior comes in, he's like, oh my God, it does. It looks just like me. And when he comes in, Hen goes over to him and greets him. And she's like, oh my God, two years. You've been gone so long. And they embrace and kiss and the replica the one we've been with the whole time he's watching this and he just cannot believe it so after a little bit we see the replica get shut down and turned off and um, the perspective switches to original junior and Terrence leaves and we see Terrence um, junior and hen try to get back into a normal daily routine because of course they've been away from each other for two years and at one point earlier in the book we saw Hen talking to Terrence and he had been asking her if she was happy and she talked about you know she wasn't miserable but there was so much more of the world that she wished she could see but Junior was so happy in the farm he never wanted to go anywhere and she says, you know, one day if I ever get the courage, I'd leave. I just, I wouldn't even tell him, I'd just leave. I'd leave a note, she'd say. It would be an envelope with his name on it. Um, but on the inside, there'd be nothing there. And um, so as they're trying their best to get back to where they were before he left, um, she's finding herself missing the replica which Junior is picking up on. He's picking up on that and it's really weirding him out. You know, he's like, it's some sheen. And she's like, yeah, well, it looked and acted, you know, it looked just like you and it acted a bit like you, only it was, <clears throat> different than you. And he's like, different, better? And she's like, just different. And he keeps trying to tell her about his trip to space and she doesn't really care. She doesn't want to hear it and that's upsetting him. And then one day in the morning, she's getting ready to go to work 
And she gives him a kiss and she says goodbye to him. And she tells him she's left him something down in the kitchen. So after a bit, he gets up, he goes makes coffee, he sees an envelope sitting on the counter addressed to him. And he opens it up, and there's nothing in there. Uh -huh. He doesn't think too much of it, he goes to work, and when he comes home, Hen is there. Only Hen's slightly different now. She's very interested in his trip to space. She's very interested in a lot of things about him that Hen previously had not been interested in. Later that night, Terrence shows up. And he says, you know, just kind of doing a check, wanting to see how everything's going. And Junior says, it's going pretty good. Pretty good. And when Hen is speaking, since she came home from work, there's no quotations around her sentences. Which was a thing that I had noticed when I started reading the book was whenever Junior would speak, there would be no quotations around his sentences. And um, then once the real Junior came back, there were quotations around his sentences. And whereas at the beginning of Hen, at the beginning of the book, Hen's sentences did have quotation marks, but now towards the end they don't. And so it all it all comes together in that Hen left as in the way that she had told Terrence that she would. But not wanting to confront Junior or leave him all alone, she has, I guess, Terrence build this replica of her so that it can be there in her place. And that's why um, Terrence came at the end, was to check and see, you know, how it was going. So, there you go. It was, uh, it was a very interesting book. It kept me guessing the whole time while that a blanket of dread was all around. I, it just, the whole thing just kept me guessing. I didn't know who was who or what was what or what we were going to fi find out. I knew there was going to be a big reveal, but, but I wasn't sure what it was. And I love when a book can do that because, you know, I've read so many books with so many twist endings at this point that once I'm into it, I start guessing the craziest twists I can think of. And usually one of them is it you know and that's disappointing I'm, I'm disappointed when I can guess the twist so when there's one that I don't guess I love it and uh, I did not put all that together for this book and that's Bo my in read he's a Canadian author I think that's so great there's a little blurb here uh, on the cover of the book at the bottom and it says Ian Reed just might be the most exciting and excitingly unclassifiable author working in Canadian fiction today That sounds right. <laughs> I read too that his, the other book of his that I read, I'm thinking of editing things, is becoming a film, and that this one might be as well. And I think they would both work really well as interesting films. So yeah, there you go. That's Faux. <laughs> I hope you enjoyed. I hope you have a great weekend, and I will see you on Monday. Bye, guys.